the pleasure to invite uh, Mr. Senthil Nathan, who is the chairman of Export Credit Guarantee Corporation, who has also been well appraised of Bharat Diamond Boards and is, plays a catalyst role in the export of commodities from India. Mr. Senthil Nathan ji, ladies and gentlemen, a very big hand. Welcome, sir. Good morning to all of you, and uh, my uh, thanks to Bharat Diamond Board's Chairman, Mr. Anup C. Mehta, and the Bharat Diamond Board's Secretary, Mr. Meghul Shah, organizers of this uh, Gems and Jewelry uh, exhibition, and uh, Chairman ADC, uh, and um, my beloved colleague, Joint Director General of Foreign Trade, uh, Sips, Mr. C. B. Chauhan, and the distinguished uh, guests who have come to this uh, event in this morning. Thank you very much for this opportunity. First of all, my apologies for coming late. I'm sorry. Uh, Export Credit Guarantee Corporation was established in the year 1957 to promote exports from India. We started giving cover on foreign buyers. And uh, later on, uh, Indian exporters were in need of working capital from institutions, from banks where their working capital needs can be properly assessed and adequate working capital can be given. And those days, uh, uh, banks are mostly focused on uh, asset-based lending, that unless you have an asset which is uh, at least 1.5 times the l loan that you require, loans were not forthcoming, then Government of India asked us to design some schemes so that the working capital for exporters can be made available by banks. So in, we designed an insurance scheme where we collect a small fee on the working capital provided to exporters and the banks were given some 70% cover on the working capital. Uh, this scheme took off sometime in 1960s. Right now, in the last uh, year, we had around 50% of working capital needs of exporters dispersed in India is under our cover. 22 major banks have taken this insurance scheme. And uh, one of the consistently uh, uh, large beneficiary is uh, gems and jewelry diamond sector. It's a very working capital intensive industry. By nature of the industry, raw material has to be purchased on uh, uh, cash or uh, maybe advanced terms, and maybe the, they do their value addition and then export it and export it on credit terms. So that is the way the industry is designed, and we had uh, more than uh, we have more than uh, six decades of association with uh, gems and jeweler industry. One of the very consistently uh, performing and growing industry, and which has made the country very proud. Uh, there are a lot of lessons that we learnt from the industry, and um, the. Uh, um, Almost nearly 95% of lessons that we learnt is uh, lessons on the positive side. Some of the lessons are which has given us a deep meaning in the business. In both the ways, lessons are almost welcome. We did suffer some losses, but on the whole, this is a very profitable journey for gems and jeweler industry and ECGC to be associated in the exports sector. We will be. We are very happy to be associated with the gems and jeweler industry and. Uh, in the last two years, our association has been more intensified. After a brief period of some uh, uh, um, huge losses based on the uh, inputs provided by the industry, we have started up uh, again opening up for covering more exports in terms of uh, facilities to the gems and jewelry exporters. Uh, some of the lessons that I can recall and I, I would like to be remembered forever is that uh, our visit to this Bharat Diamond Boards in the last uh, two, three years and when the facilities were explained. The first lesson that we learnt is that uh, be the, aspire to be the best in the world for each and everything that you want to do. Be it the facility management, security of this building and uh, in designing and also so they had gone for this diamond industry as, yes, does a lot of exports. It sources raw material from some continent, does the value addition, exports to other continents, brings a lot of revenue to this country, yes, but at the same time when they wanted to set up this uh, Bharat Diamond Boards, they have scouted the entire world and 
chosen the best so that can come to this facility. Like for example, your lifts have come from Japan, one of the best in the world at that time. Their security systems and procedures were imported from US and Europe. I am very happy to learn that uh, this is the way that uh, we would request every section of our industry be the best in the world, provide the best facilities, best quality, best design. In your systems and processes, be the best in the world, S source the best things from all over the world, and add your, do your value addition, adapt world winning processes and procedures. Prosperity will come for all. The other lesson that we learned is in this facility, we have diamond traders, diamond manufacturers, or diamond uh, industry people who have got 80 square feet requirement to 4,000 square feet requirement. You, it is an inclusive society where you are micro player, yes, you have a facility for you, you have a medium player, you have got a small player, you have got, it means in the globalized world, this is a society where everyone needs to have a opportunity to live and also prosper. So this society is not a very exclusive society for a large uh, diamond tears. Here everyone has got a stay, uh, say equal, say equal way when it comes to common facilities, management, running, deciding things. And when you want a facility which is as small as 80 square feet, yes, there is a provision for you, larger space. This so this is another lesson that uh, Every walk of life, uh, a citizen or a, uh, institutions like us, or a government, uh, 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 government or a politician leader can learn that you should not be very exclusive in your approach when it comes to giving facilities. To, uh, you don't segregate society in terms of large, medium, this thing. They try to accommodate every aspect of the society or every segment of the society, definitely prosperity will come to all. So that's why I, I consider that this facility is a lesson and here, uh, unlike in many developing countries where industry associations clamor for a subsidy, you provide this, you provide this, then we will bring one rupee, you give a subsidy of nine rupees. No, this is a facility I, which has been built entirely on their own. The members have contributed as little as $5, $10 every month for a period and then purchased this area, purchased this land and built everything out of their own funds. It is a lesson that uh, everyone can learn that you start small but be consistent in uh, uh, providing for maybe accumulating your resources then you can make it very big. And when you walk alone, maybe you will be able to walk fa uh, fast. But when you walk with others, you will be able to go far. Then since they have joined hands with more than 2,000 members, everybody contributed small and big, but they were able to achieve great things. So this is a great lesson for us in every walk of life. So I am very happy that we are associated with them. And I'm sure this association will be beneficial for both industry and you uh, and us. And I am also sure that uh, as uh, stakeholders in this industry, all of you will have a very glorious uh, year to come, uh, be it you are a purchaser or be it you are a provider of service, be it you are a provider of raw material, be it you are a, uh, you are a trader. Uh, and I'm sure uh, all of us will have uh, opportunities to achieve prosperity and also spread happiness to everyone. Wish you all the best. Thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for your kind words. Uh,